The first topic is velocity field. Basically, velocity field implies to the distribution of velocity in a given region, say R. We have considered what particular region and we are considering the change in velocity with respect to that region only. So, here we have considered one region, say R. And now we will study the change in velocity with respect to this particular region. The velocity of the fluid at the solid wall is zero. Understand this? In this region, the velocity at this solid wall of the region R is zero. In any situation or in any system, Velocity of the fluid at the wall is zero. And as we go away from the solid wall, understood? As we go away from the solid wall, velocity is increasing. And it varies from point to point. Fine. So, I can say that velocity is a function of space coordinate. So, at the distance away from the solid wall, velocity is finite and vary from point to point in a particular region. And velocity at any point is a function of space coordinate. So, I can say that for this example, in the region R, the velocity is a function of coordinate x, coordinate y and coordinate z. So, for any type of the fluid, when it is in moving condition, the velocity is very important parameter. Fine. So, for that we have to understand the concept of velocity field. Fine. So, actually velocity field is nothing but the change in velocity with respect to distance how the distance changes and according to that the velocity with respect to that distance is also changes. So, in short velocity field gives us the idea about change in velocity with respect to distance. And remember that velocity of the fluid at the solid wall is always zero and as we go away from the solid wall it will become finite and it is maximum at the center of the region. This thing you have to remember, fine. Again I am repeating, velocity at the solid wall is always zero and velocity is increasing as we go away from the solid wall and it is maximum at the center of the region or at the center of the system, fine. So this is all about the velocity field. Now let us see another topic. And to understand that topic, we have to first understand some important terms. These three terms are very important while we are studying the fluid dynamics. Or I can say while the fluid is in moving condition. Fine. The first term is one dimensional flow. One dimensional flow is the flow which is function of only one space coordinate and time. Again I am repeating. One dimensional flow is the flow which is function of one space coordinate and time. In similar way, second definition is two dimensional flow. Same as the above definition, flow parameters are the function of two space coordinate and time. At that time, this type of flow is known as two dimensional flow. Fine. When flow is a function of two space coordinate and time, then that type of flow is known as two dimensional flow. And the last term is potential flow. Potential flow is very important term. 
potential flow is nothing but the flow of incompressible fluid without presence of shear. I am giving force on without presence of shear because it is very important. While you are defining a potential flow, you must have to mention without presence of shear. Potential flow is the flow of incompressible fluid without presence of shear. And in case of potential flow, there are no circulations and eddies. So, it is also known as irrotational flow. As well as friction cannot develop in potential flow. So, no dissipation of energy into heat. So, if anyone tell you about definition of the potential flow that it is the flow of incompressible fluid without presence of shear. And if anyone asks about the characteristics of the potential flow, then you can say that there are main two characteristics of the potential flow that it is irrotational flow. Why we call it as irrotational flow? Because there are no circulation and there are no eddies. So, it is also called as irrotational flow. And the second characteristic is friction is not developed in the potential flow. So, there is no dissipation of energy into heat. Fine. So, these are the three important terms while we are studying fluid dynamics. One dimensional flow, two dimensional flow and potential flow along with its characteristics. Fine. Now, let us move to another topic which is velocity gradient and rate of shear. First of all, we have to understand what is the meaning of velocity gradient. We all know that when I am saying that the any uh, factor rate, rate that means change in that factor with respect to time. When I am saying gradient, velocity gradient, that means change in that factor with respect to distance. Remember this thing, rate when I am saying rate that means change in the factor with respect to time and when I am saying gradient that means change in that factor with respect to distance. That means when I am saying about velocity gradient that means change in velocity with respect to distance. Fine. Now to understand velocity gradient and rate of shear, here I have taken notation velocity as capital Y and distance perpendicular to wall is small y. See the graph. See this small y, small y is distance perpendicular to wall and dy by dy, d capital Y upon d small y. That means change in velocity with respect to change in distance. That means this d capital Y upon d small y represent what? Velocity gradient. Fine. So, this is the graph of distance perpendicular to wall versus velocity gradient. So, it will give this type of nature you can see in the graph. And the second graph is the graph of distance from the wall that is small y versus velocity capital Y. Distance from the wall versus velocity. So, you can say that you can see it shows like this. Fine. It is very much clear. Fine. Because velocity is 0 at the solid wall and increases to maximum to the center of the wall. Fine. So, this is the two graph. First is the distance versus velocity gradient and second is the distance versus velocity. Fine. So, I can see that from these two graph at small y equal to 0 that means at distance is 0, capital Y is 0. Fine. That I have already explained you in the concept of velocity field. And capital Y increases with distance from the wall. And velocity gradient is the change in velocity with respect to distance. So, I can say that 
the velocity gradient is a function of position in the stream and the velocity gradient is also known as shear rate velocity gradient is also known as shear rate fine that means change in velocity with respect to distance is also called as shear rate so this is the concept of velocity gradient and rate of shear now let us see the concept of viscosity viscosity is very important parameter while we are studying the fluid dynamics that is when fluid is in motion viscosity is very important parameter what is the viscosity meaning basically viscosity of the fluid is a measure of its resistance to flow factor which resists the flow that is viscosity so you can define viscosity as viscosity of a fluid is a measure of its resistance to flow viscosity of fluid that means viscosity of gas and viscosity of liquid both is different let us discuss first about viscosity of gases viscosity of gases increases with increase in temperature remember this thing it is very important viscosity of gases increases with increase in temperature and there is an empirical equation see here mu upon mu 0 equal to t upon 273 raised to n now what is this mu mu is the viscosity at given temperature mu 0 is the viscosity at standard temperature and our standard temperature is 273 kelvin so mu is viscosity at given temperature mu 0 is viscosity at standard temperature t is the absolute temperature and 273 which is standard temperature and this n is constant and this n value is different from different component for every component n value is different fine so you if you have given that calculate viscosity at so and so temperature and viscosity at standard temperature is this much then you can calculate the viscosity of that gas using this formula fine and the basic relation for viscosity of gas with temperature is viscosity of gas increases with increase in temperature viscosity of gas is basically independent of pressure at normal pressure range but at high pressure range viscosity of gas increases with pressure again i am repeating at normal pressure range viscosity of gas is independent of pressure but at higher pressure range viscosity of gas increases with increase in pressure so this is about viscosity of gases and its effect with respect to change in temperature and pressure now what about viscosity of liquid viscosity of liquid decreases with increase in temperature viscosity of liquid decreases with increase in temperature and viscosity of liquid increases with increase in pressure fine so in exam it may be asked that define viscosity and effect of temperature and pressure on viscosity of gases and liquid then you have to explain this theory what is viscosity viscosity of gas how it affects the temperature and pressure and how the viscosity of liquid changes with respect to temperature and pressure and this parameter is very important while we are discussing about fluid dynamics fine so in today's lecture we have started the second part of our chapter which is fluid flow phenomena and in that in today's session we have covered what is velocity field what is velocity gradient and rate of shear some important terms and about the viscosity i hope these topics are clear to all thank you